Hello everybody, I'm Mike Levin of MikeLevinSEO.com and when last we left off we had Pi Green running on the Raspberry Pi for serving websites using static text files which can optionally be made dynamic Python files. So we had an internal IP on port 8080 and we're getting not found and every time I do a refresh on that it'll make a line entry here where we have run pygreen space serve. Now port 8080 isn't exactly what I want because this has to be mikelevinseo.com. So I'll do a control C and as many things in, Py in Linux have, this has a hyphen hyphen help parameter to give us a little more information about the arguments we can use with pygreen serve. Hopefully in a second we'll see them. There they are. Hey, one of them is port. So I can probably change this in the configuration or in the uh, actual files uh, later on. But a quick way to get this running on port 80 is to use the same command, but hyphen p space 80. And so whereas previously I had to use an internal IP with a colon 8080, I have port 80 accessible from the outside world. And my web router configured to route inbound traffic to port 80 on my Raspberry Pi. So let's try going to MikeLevinSEO.com. No port number. And there's the same not found. So that's the first thing I want to show you. Uh, how did I do that? Well, let's see. Let me get logged in to uh, GoDaddy. We will pause the video for a second. And this is my entry in, Do in GoDaddy for MikeLevinSEO.com. I go over to the DNS zone file and you can see that this public IP number, which is the static IP given to me by Verizon for my FIO service, is resolving to the at symbol. And my Verizon router software, which I had shown in an earlier video, is taking all inbound traffic on port 80 and 443 and forwarding it to the correct internal IP address. And that's how we get public uh, domain name resolution to a Raspberry Pi in my office. What else? Well, there's a couple other things I want to show you. Uh, we're not quite ready to do web development work because we need a way to manage to create and edit text files and we need a way to keep it all safe. So on my Levinix distro of Linux, which is really tiny core Linux, I'm always advocating the short stack. And what you want is the least amount of software to allow you to do the largest amount of things for the longest time period into the future. A lot of longevity we're going for. So this is the most controversial part of what I'm advocating. I am advocating a very old school text editor named Vim. So the short stack, in my opinion, for people who want to do a little programming old school and not get caught up in the JavaScript Node.js movement, can choose uh, pretty much any version of Linux, one with a repo remote package manager, makes it much easier. Um, I'm using Arch in this case. Uh, Linux is based on Tiny Core, but Linux and the Linux command set plus Python, Vim as your text editor, and Git, a distributed revision control system to keep your code safe, potentially for life. As you can see, there's this big trend of hardware being inconsequential. Your code, and in some cases, your data and your databases are all that's important. And so long as that can freely flow from hardware to hardware, you have almost complete freedom from hardware. So the Pac-Man system 
hyphen uppercase s, we can pull down git first because it's really more fundamental. Git is a, a way to keep your code very, very safe. But you're going to need to create some code. So immediately after uh, git is pulled down and installed, I'm going to install vim. Now, people who use Ubuntu might be familiar with vim hyphen nox for no user interface, and that's the version I always use on Ubuntu, but Arch Linux, by virtue of not having a GUI, doesn't require that. So, pacman hyphen s vim. pulling it down. And after this is done, this is going to be a great time to image off the SD card because it has basically a whole developer and hosting stack installed on it. And no matter how you screw up, you can just uh, return to this uh, point. What I'll probably do is pause the video and figure out where I have to put my hello world file so that you can see something more than a 404 error and edit it with Vim. And then, I'm not sure, maybe I'll fit it in this same tutorial, push that code up to either GitHub or Bitbucket so that your code now is living somewhere other than your Raspberry Pi. And we'll just do Vim, there it is. Type git, yep, both are installed, and we'll be right back. Well, we're back, and it's easier than I thought. When you type pygreen space serve, it just serves out of its existing folder. So if we do an ls, we can see there's nothing else in this folder. And so if we do vim index.html, which is the traditional name of the index file to be served as the home page on a website, we are now in vim, and this is a whole education in and of itself, which I'll cover separately, but basically I'm hitting I to go into insert mode. I'm doing open pointy bracket, H1, close pointy bracket, hello world, and closing the H1 tag, saving the file, exiting Vim, and now just up arrowing back to my command for running Pygreen on port 80. Now we should have the most bare bones MikeLevinSEO.com site possible. Voila. And this next step will be creating a new repository in GitHub. I'm going to do that because I want to make it public and GitHub doesn't charge anything for public repositories. But if you wanted to do this and keep your code private, I would recommend Bitbucket, which doesn't charge anything for your private repositories. They're sort of complementary to each other and I keep an account in each. So this is simply going into your GitHub account, which hopefully was previously set up. You hit new repository and this is going to be my mic. Levin SEO site and my public professional website and it's the bare bones beginnings. I can always change that description later. It's going to be public and we could initialize it with a readme but I won't do that for now. Create repository. Now it gives me some instructions on how to make my current working directory into a Git repository and the commands I use to uh, connect it to GitHub. Because right now we have um, a login to the Pi here. I'm going to control C out of the hosting. Pretty soon I'll have two shells logged in so I don't have to exit and leave. But I'm going to start pasting the commands that they're telling me on GitHub. git init, that initializes this location as a, uh, as a git repository. 
and then I'm going to add the readme.markdown file that I had just created with the touch command and now it's added to the repository. I also want to git add index.html which I had just created and uh, git commit hyphen m for first commit. Very nice. Now um, we want to give it our identity so it gives us some pretty good instructions here. Git config global user not name. I'll just type it. User dot name Mike Levin. Git config global user dot email. Mike Levin at gmail.com. And now when I do a commit it will take that information. Uh, let's see, git commit amend reset author. Okay, I'll do that. That makes me the author of the most recent commit that I just made. It brings me into Vim because that's my default text editor. I just save it and quit. And you really wouldn't have to do any of that. A lot of this is because we're using Git for the first time, so there's some setup stuff happening, and I figure I'll cover it because, hey, it's a tutorial for you to maybe use Git for the first time. Next command, git remote add origin and the path on GitHub to where it's located. Okay, that went very well. The next step is actually doing the push up there, and this is where it's probably going to challenge you for your password. Okay, I remembered my password. So we can go over to GitHub, and now we should find another repository in my accounts. And there it is, there's the index.html and the readme. Pushed up to GitHub, now forever safe. I could, uh, I could blow out this Raspberry Pi, uh, it could get ruined, it doesn't matter. The code is safe. And that is such a huge lesson of moving from most other types of programming work you might do to server programming. The hardware of your server, aside from optimization issues, is almost inconsequential. Use as generic Linux as you can and keep your code and potentially your databases safe. And you can always move your application from one piece of hardware to the next over the years. Thank you, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.